All right, so it's going down. UFC Fight Night 71, Mir versus Duffy. It takes place this Wednesday night, July 15th, live from San Diego. It's going to be on Fox Sports 1 at 7 p.m. That means that it's free. Make sure you check it out. And right now, we have former Strike Force champion Josh Hold the P. Thompson takes on Tony Ferguson in the co main event. And even though I said Hold the P, I still said Thompson. <laughs> You know what? You, you know what? That might actually have to be my new nickname, man. <laughs> you just gave me a great idea. That's that's awesome. I've been trying to get people to spell my last name right for years, man. Josh <laughs> holds the P. Thompson. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Perfect. So, Josh, you're coming off two very tough, somewhat controversial split decision losses. How do you prepare for this fight to make it different so that if it goes to the decision, it's, you got the UD or at least, I mean, finish the guy? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I really thought to myself that I, I need I need to get it done that way, you know. Like I need to I need to go out there and at least make it very convincing that I won the fight. Uh, I really don't want to leave it in the judges this time. I mean, it's really cost me the last two fights. I mean, I went from, you know, being on the brink of a title shot, you know, fighting uh, Pettis, scheduled to fight Pettis, you know, for the title, and then you know being stuck in in limbo when, uh, you know, he decided that he, he was going to get injured for a year, a little over a year, you know. So <laughs> then I come back and I'm fighting other guys and, you know, it's uh, it's a little it's a little upsetting. You know, I think somebody that you've worked your way up so much to get to a title shot and then, you know, and you, you're expecting to fight the best guys and then, you know, you end up fighting guys that, you know, just you feel like it's, it's, way, it's a step way back, you know. And so the motivation level isn't, isn't there as much. Well, you've, you've always been a, a, an entertaining fighter to watch, I mean, to say the least. Coming off of two tough losses has got to be hard. But now, you you know, you got your, your shot coming up this Wednesday, and you're currently ranked number nine. You've expressed, like, frustrations with the rankings before. You are still in the top ten. So after Wednesday, do you have your, your eyes on any prizes past this fight? No, I mean, right now, honestly, like, uh, you know, we're dealing with a lot of, like, contract stuff as well as, like, just the fight itself. So, um, you know, I'm not really concerned. I, I used to be concerned about the ranking situations, but I'm just not concerned about it anymore. I mean, really, um, you know, you really don't know what, what the UFC is going to do when it comes to fight stuff. So I just, the best thing I can do is just go out there and just fight and just take care of it. You know, and I, I try to tell myself that all the time. Like, you know what, winning, winning kind of solves everything. You know, and it doesn't really matter uh, about anything else. You know, if you go out there and win, then, you know, it kind of just shuts everyone up. Well, we saw you get very vocal there on Twitter. You're calling out Cowboy Cerrone once, you know, Nurm Gurdoff pulled out of their fight and even calling out possibly Eddie Alvarez. Uh, Tony Ferguson, your your opponent, got kind of offended by some of this, saying that, you know, what's funny is he said, you're you're being a punk. Apparently he didn't realize your actual nickname. <laughs> <laughs> and... uh he said that you're you're not giving him enough credit. You know that he's went he's you know won his last five of six, and that he hasn't or he's on five five win streak. He's only had one loss in six years. That what do you think about him as an opponent? Oh, I mean, like I think he's very talented, man. I, mean, like, I got nothing bad to say about the guy. It's just look, it, it, if they if they would have called him and said, hey, you want to fight Cerrone on short notice instead of fighting Thompson, what do you think he would have said? Right. I would have said yeah. I mean, like, they do, it doesn't make any sense not to take the guys that are ranked higher. I mean, like, it, it's a no-brainer. I think any, you know, look, look what Chad Mendes just did. You know, you think he's regretting, you know, that he took that fight? Hell no, he's not regretting it. He <laughs> stepped up on two weeks notice. Probably made about two, three million dollars. You know, and he's excited. I mean, he's, he's probably laughing all the way to the bank. I mean, anybody else <laughs> would be doing the same thing. Look, there was a chance that Gilbert, wasn't, or Gilbert or Eddie was going to get injured for the fight. My suggestion was, was hey, I've been training. I'm ready to fight. Let, you know, let me step in there, you know, and fight, you know? And that was the biggest thing. Cerrone, I mean, first off, I had the inside scoop on the Cerrone fight because Khabib's my teammate. But Khabib got hurt. We knew he got hurt that day. So the first thing we did is we, we went out there and said, hey, let me get this fight. You know, that, that's just, that, that just makes sense, you know? So the fact that he's offended by it, I mean, that's just kind of like little kid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Gil. I mean, recently we just saw, I mean, you had a lot a string of fights with Gil Melendez. He recently gets popped for a, a banned substance. What do you think of that whole situation? What was your initial reaction? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, look, Gil, Gil, knows, Gil knows what he did. He, he talked about it. You know, he, he answered questions about it, I guess. You know, he came out and said publicly what was going on. And, you know, and, um, you know, I think I think he's somebody that will will come back even stronger. You know, that's uh, that's uh, he's got a heart of a lion, man. You can't take away his accolades and the things he did. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I think he knows that he messed up, and he, you know, when he comes back, he'll be ready to go. You think the uh, with the new suspension regulations that the the, the year off is going to affect him quite a bit? You know, I really don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, 
honestly, I mean, he's, he's actually very lucky because, like, Shermanko got three years. Right. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I mean, he, I think a year, I mean, it's that, that's a lucky situation. I think, um, you know, when he, I think he'll be ready to go when he comes back. I mean, he, he's a tough kid. He's, oh, he's, uh, he's talented. He's mentally, he's very strong. You know, it'll be interesting to see what happens when he comes back. I mean, in a year, the whole the whole bracket can change. Oh yeah, I mean, you time. can go from being a top three guy to all of a sudden you could be out of the top ten. Uh, having fought him so many times, did you ever have any inclination or anything, or do you think it was just something that happened with his supplements, like you said, or something that happened that he was handed? Nah, I, I never really thought about anything like that. You know, I mean, honestly, I I had trained with him beforehand, and you know, and uh, he he was always tough. I mean, I there was never any doubt whether he was tough or not. You know, I don't. I can't say whether he was on anything or not. I really didn't notice anything. I didn't, didn't see anything that suggested that. There's a lot of stuff going on in the UFC now, obviously with these new uh, regulations on suspensions and things like that, but also we debuted the, the Reebok kits over the weekend. How do you feel about this kit? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, like, there's no secret. For guys that are in the top ten, you're costing us a lot of money, you know? <laughs> right. But I, I, do, I see the bigger picture as a, as a – you know, as an athlete, I see a bigger picture in it. You know, and um, I see what their where their focus is and where the, what they're trying to do with it. I think it's I think it eventually later on down the road. But the ones that are right now, the, when this hit us now, it's, we're suffering right now. Right. It'd be different if like we were like the NFL players, where like if my jersey sells this many, I get a percentage of it. Well, we don't get that. You know. So realistically, I just threw out all my sponsors and you know, and uh, between you know, and, and I'm giving you a, a figure that is real. Between fifty to eighty thousand a fight is what I'd be making in sponsors. Now I'm being reduced down to you know five to eight grand. That's, I you mean, know, that's, so that's a, that's a big hit, you know, and um, <clears throat> and that that's unfortunate, you know. But like I said, there's there's a lot of things that are going on right now as far as just on my side with uh, you know I'm taking a big chance on this fight. I'm taking a big op- I'm taking a big chance just with my career, you know. Um, the UFC's been trying to retire me for the last year, and um, we haven't been able to come to agreement. So. Just like, just like LeBron James, just like all the other NFL players right now, you know, Dez Bryant, those guys, they're all, you know, they're all holding out. And I'm not saying that I'm holding out, but I'm looking for a better contract. And it's hard to get renegotiated off of a loss, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really banking on myself to go out here and get this win, you know, so I can get a better contract from the UFC. Well, it's happening this Wednesday. It's going down in San Diego, UFC Fight Night 71, Mir versus Duffy. Uh, if you want to watch it for free, it's on Fox Sports 1 at 7 p.m. Of course, again, Josh Thompson is going to be going up against Tony Ferguson. Before we let you go, we got one more question for you, Josh. It's uh, who would win in a fight question. All right, Josh, so who's going to win in a fight? A bear with machine guns for hands and feet or a pterodactyl that poops chainsaws? <laughs> a, bear with mach- a bear with machine guns, of course. You machine- a chainsaws, <laughs> you have to get too close for chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this question is so ridiculous yeah, on, that we get so. Be lo- that, that, you guys, let's be logical about this, guys. Come on. I, this is a pterodactyl, though. He does have the aerial advantage. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe the bear's just not a good shot. <laughs> I think I think Dodge and I are both Team Bear, but we talked to Frank Mir earlier, and he was pterodactyl. I mean, like I, I like the idea of the pterodactyl, but he's got to get pretty close. I mean, if you're that close, you can be shot. <laughs> <laughs> I love this ridiculous question. It's not like question. he just has one gun. He's got four guns, right? Cause right. Those right. But the, the pterodactyl does yeah, have an unli- like unlimited him. supply of chainsaws coming out of his butt. <laughs> out of his butt. <laughs> uh, I can't believe it. I mean, the bear, the bear, obviously, he's going to be just laying on his back, right, with his four paws up in the air, or his four machine guns just pointed up in the air and just letting it go. Hammer down. That's our theory. <laughs> Hammer down. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Like a turtle on his back just. Firing off, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I don't even care about going to the camp. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Well, hey, Josh, thanks for your time today, and of course, best of luck up against Tony Ferguson this Wednesday night on Fox Sports One. Uh, all right, guys, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, Stockton. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>